about that. The Fiesta conversation. Hmm. I think it's one of the landmark events in my life. It took me about two years to tell my wife. When I was removed from Jericho Hour, it was such a tough situation at a point I wanted to commit suicide. Yes. Because of the things I was going through. A lot of challenges and struggle. And I was counting the cost. But in 1989, I had a vision where I went to heaven and came back. And it's one of the bedrocks why I've held on to stay in action. Because I heard Jesus speak to me, come back. I've called you. Your time hasn't come. The work I gave you, I've not done it. Why are you coming? So in the spirit, I saw my wife lying down there. We're in Harisoya's house. And then my spirit came from heaven and entered my body. I was not well, so I stayed in 37 for about a month. That bishop was in London, and he flew down. So I went and stayed in his house a month. And you see, I never forget when people do good to me. So penny your papa more rainfi. And the thing happened at night, so it's always been in my mind. And no matter what I face and difficulties I face, even with leadership, I want to keep my vow. So the pressure was big. And challenges had come. Yes, Papa owns the work. He has come. It's his right. His entitlement was making changes. It is right as the Archbishop. And the work is his. But I was also going through a lot of struggle. And I was becoming suicidal. The enemy was giving me pressure. And God said, if you leave, you will destroy my work. I was torn between my pain my situation. But three months, I was not even eating well. My pressure, doctors were checking. I didn't know what to do. Then one day I had a call from Pastor Eastwood. This is about 20 years ago. He said, James, I want to see you. I said, okay. Uh, where? He said, I'm in Borga. I said, oh, so I should fly? He said, no, I'm on the plane tomorrow. These are major things. It will save your life. So tomorrow morning, I'm on the flight to Accra. I'll see you at Fiesta Royal. I didn't tell my wife any. The next morning, I dressed. When I went there, Pastor Eastwood was sitting in the chair. There were about eight other pastors and bishops. And there was a chair for me. I didn't know what it was. But I remember two people because the confusion on me and the crying. Hmm. Yes. For me to still have tears in my eyes, 20 it shows how tough the situation is. The chair was there. I remember two people Bishop Taki Aboy and Nana Sakodia. They were the two people I remember. I cried so much, I can't remember anybody. He said, James, sit down. So I sat down, they were sitting. And Pastor Eastwood, he didn't let me speak. He said, James, God spoke to me that I should come to Accra and talk to you. He said, don't break away. Don't leave the church. Because the damage you will cause, you will regret it. And he used a word I think I hadn't heard. He said, bite the bullet. Go through it. God said, I should tell you, he'll take care of you. I collapsed. Because that's not what I wanted to hear. Then I felt Pastor Jesus' voice. They prayed, they prayed, they prayed over me. I was crying. Then said, James, go. God will take care of you. I went to my house in the room for three days. I couldn't talk to my wife. I couldn't tell her. She doesn't know what it was. Three days. Ministry is not easy. Loyalty and obedience comes at a cost. Sometimes 
you can't do it the way you want to. To follow leadership and be obedient, it will cost you something. God bless you. So, many, many people don't understand our relationship. And for years, I'll be there and he will send me an offering. And I'm like, ah, big brother, I'm supposed to give to you, not you to me. He said, you saved my life and my ministry. You saved my life and my ministry. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, this man of God, by the grace of God, I think Bishop James is not just a preacher. He's a statement. He's a statement. Because, I mean, this man's works, his name, everything he has done, is equivalent to any general overseer, founder, apostle, whatever. We salute you. We love you for your example. Because I tell you, around that period, if this man had done what some of the temptations... That was the end of loyalty. That was the end of faithfulness. But you have distinguished yourself and the Lord mightily bless you. So, that is question number one, taken down. And the man, you may be seated, and the man was running Jericho Hour. Jericho Hour at that time was the Alpha Hour. And it was a um, what is the name of Prophet Nana says um, old Porter City or the meetings they do and all this revival and people are holding meetings and people are trooping in by the numbers. It was Jericho Hour. Astounding testimonies, massive move of God. People were traveling from Togo, Burkina, Nigeria. Then Archbishop Papa comes and I don't think he told you too nicely the thing is over. The thing ended. How did you handle that? Because you are still sitting in the church. How did, how did you go about that? <laughs> are you I, asked, I, I, I went to his office the next day. I said, Papa, have I done anything wrong? He said, no. He said, is it the decision? I said, yes. Then he asked me, I didn't suspect that question coming. He asked me, do you have any problem with the decision? I also said no. Your leader said God has told him. He has the right to change you. He has the right to reposition you. Leaders don't take decisions that are palatable. Leaders are not there to do what you want. I have one rule. Once you say, God said, I obey. And I put the pressure on God. I don't want to wake up tomorrow and find out God said and I disobeyed. No. So, And every time I've done that, it has worked. Thank you, Bishop. Now, um, so we are dealing with ministry sometimes when one of the crises in leadership is that we are even afraid to change people. No, you are afraid to change people. The person is serving water. You can't say stop and sink. You should be offended. Yeah, go, go ahead. Uh, help me. Is it Acts chapter 8 where Philip who was doing the revival. Yeah, sure. It was Acts chapter 8. And he says the whole city was in an uproar. Science. What, in fact, Philip is the only one the Bible uses the word evangelist. Proper evangelist. With signs and wonders. Al Jazeera was there. BBC. Contemporary reference. They were all there. They were covering him. was on social media. He's following his more than Ronaldo. And every... Philip is doing it. Then the Holy Ghost told him, he should go to where? The desert. And meet one person. 
the Ethiopian Enoch. In an isolated desert, he'll be flown there to go and meet the person. Would a modern charismatic pastor say, I'm not going. I've broken away. Ah, Jesus could have come from heaven and also broken away here. He said, the father sent me and I go back to the father. Jesus said, I came from the father and I'm going back. I finished my work. There's no place for breakaway in the Trinity. And so, Philip is the best example. You have not had a meeting bigger than Philip did. And yet he left it and went to preach to one person. I'm sure called me and said, I transferred you to Adenta. Oh! I went. It was a small church by the grace of God. Pastor Sala was there, Bishop Sala. And we helped to grow the work. I was there, he sent me and said, I've transferred you back to Sprinters after nine years to ten years. Ah. And you know, voices. I think let's put this right. If you are going to follow the voice of people, you won't obey leadership. People call me and say, Bishop, Yanya would die. Mini coffee. People who supposedly wish me well. They are hearing from God for me. They love me, but they are creating problems for me. They are coming between me and God. Said, ah, we hear you've been transferred back to Smith. What is the problem? I said, there's no problem. Hey, so you are going? I said, I'm going. And I went. And I'm at peace. Don't listen to the people. Once your leader said, God said, you don't want to wake up and find out it is God and you disobeyed. Okay, so um, we, we, are, we are learning some things. And um, this is Fountain Gate Chapel, a ministry where the churches are autonomous. And I'm telling you, when you deal with an autonomy system, that sense of entitlement can be very strong. Autonomy does not mean people cannot move. Hmm. Sometimes you yourself, you may get a conviction by God to leave Takradi and go and start a church in Elubo and relocate to Elubo. But you may not hear it. Constitution says autonomy. You cannot be moved. But the chairman can call you and say, the Lord has told me that you can move. Look, I, I have seen pastors in this church. Eh? I personally suggested to them to move. Because where they were, I knew they were dying there. The man is not preaching from, a, from just the Bible. So I think in a way, he has answered the question on Adenta. So the man leaves Jericho Hour. He goes to Adenta. He's the bishop over there. He's built it, and all of us knew him as the Bishop of Adenta. Then, like he said, we all heard it. He has to move back to the headquarters, and the man did. But at the age of 71, is it not even a blessing for you to move there so you even have some bit of peace? And he's now moving around the whole world like a coach, and he's just ministering in various churches. He's a no, and that because if you had occupied, for example, Apostle, if you were doing Jer Jericho Hour, maybe you can come here. Maybe you can come here. We, we would have been struggling to get, get him, and we, he would not get the space to come. But the man is now coming here. He goes to the Archbishop. I'm going to my brother Eastwood in Borga. Archbishop prays for him, and he says, When you go to Borga, tell the people, Toma, Toma. So Archbishop actually sent him a text and said, he prayed for him. And when he got here, he sent him a message. I have reached. He said, tell the people, Tuma Tuma. Because Archbishop knows Tuma Tuma. Tuma Tuma means, um, I don't know what it means in English. But it means work, work. When you are working, they say Tuma Tuma. So work, work. It's a form of greeting. Okay. All right. Now, Bishop, um, so you've answered a lot of the questions indirectly. So let me give you just the last one um you know recently too you were the head of the bishops you were the head of the college of bishops first chairman for about 10 years, for eight, about 10 years. eight years yes and that one too you stepped down 
Uh, yes. And the Bishop Okweje, who is far younger than you, has taken over. Yes. And you are still among It's supposed the to be two years apiece. Okay. But I, so I was there for about four sessions. And then Archbishop uh, asked that I hand over to. There was an election. And then Bishop Okweje, he, Bishop Okweje, has even done two years and now. They are holding down the two years, so there's a new person. Bishop Bodai is not the chairman. Your friend, Bishop Bodai, is not the chairman. Amazing. Good. Thank you, sir. Good. I appreciate it.